Hello, bog turtles and bog turtle families. Um, just a couple preliminary things. Uh, this is Guy Josh. Uh, this is going to be the first in a series of videos um, that I'll be creating to supplement the games and worksheets that we sent home um, so that we can work on developing the mathematical concepts that will be necessary uh, to learn from those games and to progress uh, for as long as we are out of school. Uh, for those who are uh, joining from elsewhere, uh, these videos are going to be on first grade math curricular material um, per the New Jersey State Standards. A few more really important thoughts. Um, first of all, these videos are intended to be watched with an adult family member. Um, there's a variety of reasons for that, but the most important one is really these videos are aimed at both the parent or uh, responsible adult and the child. Um, the, this is the information that will hopefully help you help your child uh, be successful with the math work. In this particular video, I'm going to talk a little bit overall about uh, what kinds of things to expect from these videos and uh, how to approach using them, and uh, a, a little bit about uh, the first topics we'll be covering. My hope is that we'll cover a wide range of different uh, math topics, um, not just in terms of the content, but in terms of approaches, um, so that we're really uh, providing the broadest foundation in terms of uh, math thinking skills, problem solving, number sense, and just general numeracy. Um, these will often, but not always, uh, directly relate to uh, the activities assigned for the day, um, or it may be supplemental uh, work aimed at developing general math ability. From time to time, it's going to be important, um, and this is one of the reasons to do this with an adult, um, I'll, I'll ask you to pause the video at certain points to either think about something or try something, um, and it's really important to actually stop and do that, um, because what will happen after a pause is then I'll continue to explain my thinking, um, but that's not as useful if you haven't tried first. So, for instance, I might ask something like this. What could we draw to help us solve the problem uh, 3 plus 2 equals something? Then I'll ask you to pause the video and uh, think about how many different ways you can find to solve this problem. Um, after which I uh, will demonstrate a couple of different ways that I might solve the problem, um, none of which are necessarily the best or only, and the list would not necessarily be exclusive. Um, just an aside, the, one of the things I really try to reinforce with the students is that math is a toolbox, and they're all, all, all valid mathematical approaches work. Um, that's really the wonderful thing about math. Uh, there's, there's no such thing as using a wrong strategy as long as it's mathematically valid. There may be times that I ask you to try a particular strategy, but it's really important to recognize and reinforce that ho however you can reliably and accurately uh, find a correct solution is a good approach. So let's try this real quick. Uh, pause the video and think about uh, different ways that you might think about this problem. So hopefully you've had a good chance to think uh, about what strategies you might use. Um, at this point of the year, uh, for many students, this is going to be a relatively straightforward problem. And they may even just say, oh, 3 plus 2. I know what that equals. It's 5. And 
you know, we, that's called fluency. Um, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, you know, it, when, a, when a child recognizes that relationship right away, that's something we should celebrate. We should still push a little bit to think about how could we prove it. So what leapt to mind for me is that I might show that if I take sorry, uh, three objects and then a group of two objects, and I add them together, I'm going to have uh, five objects in all. That's a perfectly great strategy. I might also think about it this way. I might imagine a number line. Uh, I would start at three, and then I would add on two more. One, two. That also brings me to five. Uh, th these are by no means exhaustive strategies. Um, strategies with counting on fingers are perfectly valid, highly reliable, and while it's great to try to use more complicated strategies, understanding and being able to use reliably simple strategies is fundamental. Um, it is okay to use simple strategies, but then we want to maybe try to push and uh, try a little more. Sometimes I may ask you to practice uh, mental math strategies where you neither use objects nor drawing or a, a, a number line to try it in your mind only. And for this problem, it might look something like this, that, well, I, I know I'm starting with three, and if I am going to add two, it means I'm going to count on two times. So I'm going to go three, and then four, five. And obviously you couldn't see me, but I was using my fingers to uh, keep track of my count on. Uh, there's lots of different ways to approach mental math problems, and we'll talk about that more as we go on. But just something to be looking out for. Uh, the first series of lessons and activities we're going to be doing are all on the topic of making 10. So I want to say uh, a few preliminary things about that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to think about these kinds of problems. And, and just for clarity, uh, a, a making 10 problem is going to come in a variety of forms, but basically what we're looking for is is finding the combinations of numbers that uh, add up to 10. Um, w one of the f first ways that I'd like to review is, is the idea of a 10 frame. Um, uh, this is something that the students are all familiar with. Um, a 10 frame is a uh, rectangle that's divided into two rows and then... Oops, that didn't work. Um, there we go. As you'll see, I make lots of mistakes. I try not to edit them out um, because I think it's really important to m model that uh, math in many ways is a process of trial and error. Um, what, what I noticed as I was going along was that, okay, I had my two rows, but then because I only added in three lines, that split me into one two, three, four boxes per line, and that's going to add up to eight and all. So I needed to add on two more to the end. I could have erased the whole thing and started over, but sometimes we really just want to move forward and make it work. So, making ten. Making ten problems are basically, in, in a variety of different disguises, going to ask this. If I have, say, four of something... How many more would I need to make 10? Um, so in the 10 frame, you'll notice I've filled in um, from left to right across the top. Um, this would be the next box I fill, then I go to the second row. It's not strictly necessary from a mathematical level that they're filled out in this way, but this is the way that um, generally children see and understand the most clearly, because what we can see with practice is that 
this first row is 5, and the second row is 5. And that's going to allow us to eventually use some shortcuts as we think about it, because what then we're going to do is we're going to think about how many more objects we need to go into the, into the 10 frame to make 10. So I might just go like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the 10 frame has two big advantages here. First of all, it limits what I'm doing. I know that if I fill it, I'm at 10. The other thing that it helps do is it makes some of these relationships a little bit clearer. So this row, we know that's 5. And this one more red one that I added on, that'd be 5 and one more, or 6. So hopefully we begin to see these relationships a little bit more automatically. I hope this in particular will help you with some of the work that we're going to be doing today and tomorrow. Um, if you, and I, I'll be elaborating more on these kinds of strategies in future videos. I really wanted to kind of give you an overview of what this will look like in this video, and I don't want to go on much longer because I'm already over 10 minutes. Um, but again, the most important thing is to watch it with a parent um, or other family member uh, so that you can talk about it, so that you can work together on whatever associated problems you're working on, um, and so that everyone's on the same page about what we're doing. If anything comes up in these videos um, that's confusing or you felt like you didn't totally understand or just have any questions about whatsoever, uh, please email us. Um, so that we can get back to you right away. Um, if it's something simple, we may email you right back with an answer. If it's more complicated, we might do another video uh, to answer in more detail. Please don't uh, put your questions into the comments uh, because, frankly, I don't look at them very often. Also, if there's anything that you think could be improved about um, how these videos are made or presented uh, in any respect, um, that's really helpful to know, so please don't be afraid to give that kind of feedback. I have one more thing that I'd like to um, talk about today, which is I have a special assignment for you. Um, I'd like you to start to begin collecting 120 of something. It could be anything, as long as they're relatively the same, relatively uniform. Uh, things that come to mind are pebbles, or twigs, um, or pennies, Lego bricks, whatever is easily available for you. Um, you don't need to have these ready right away, but later on in our studies, you're going to want to have um, uh, these available. Um, paper clips might be easy, depending on the kind of uh, office supplies you have at home. Um, but anyways, again, uh, hopefully parents are watching too. Make sure you talk to your parents about what you collect and how you're going to store it. It's going to be important that you um, maintain access to them. Um, that is it for this video. Again, please uh, don't hesitate at all to reach out if you have any questions about any of this. I uh, hope this is helpful, and talk to you all soon.